I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Detective Comics number 969. Now that Tim Drake has returned from Mr. Oz's prison, he's ready to make a major splash in Gotham City. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? So as we open up the comic, we actually start a ways in the past. Stephanie Brown is visiting anarchy in Arkham Asylum. He continues to try and coerce Spoiler to his side in the side of the first victim, saying they're more than just a group of supervillains, they're an actual movement. And a very organic one, too, given the new military nature of Batman and his brand new team operating in Gotham. Spoiler's not stupid, and as such she's not buying into this, but at the same time she recognizes that there's something wrong with her, that Lonnie is very much her rebound guy post Tim. It's a pretty good thing then that by the time Spoiler is ready to hit the streets once again, Tim is sitting there waiting for her, having dealt with the threat posed by the evil Batman of tomorrow. Steph thinks that now that her boyfriend is back, they can pick up where they left off, Tim can go to school, they can put the capes away and start a new life somewhere else in another city. Unfortunately for her, she doesn't realize what Tim's time away has caused him to reconsider. Now from there, we transition on over to Killer Moth of all people. He's hosting a huge meeting with representatives from all of Gotham's largest criminal organizations who have been taking a beating in the last couple months. Ever since Batman and his other vigilantes started coordinating their efforts thanks to the Belfry. Killer Moth's proposition is simple. Pay him a chunk of your revenue and in exchange him and his brand new team of supervillains will keep the heroes busy. Tim, who is scoping out this meeting, says that this plan is probably the smartest thing Killer Moth has ever done and it might have worked too if he actually was able to rope in some AAA villains. Taking down this meeting is going to be all too easy, especially now thanks to Tim, Spoiler, and everyone else is back in the fold. Granted, Batwoman says she's not sure how long, especially if Tim is going to be dishonest with her. You see, after seeing his dark future, after seeing Seeing what would happen if he becomes Batman, Tim decides that instead of fighting this future, instead he's going to try and meld it to make it work for him. If being forced into the role of Batman is what forces him over the edge and into the dark side, well, he's just not going to be forced at all. He's going to actively run into becoming Batman. Speaking of Batman, where is he right now? Well, he's having a sit-down with the new Gotham Mayor, Atkins. This dude's a former cop and would be more than willing to work with Batman, but he's not exactly stoked about this idea of a team filled out with mostly younger people and, oh yeah, one or two reformed supervillains. Batman further doesn't trust Atkins because his deputy mayor is the son of deceased and corrupt former Mayor Hill. Now, as the comic winds down, we once again check in with Anarchy and Arkham. We see that the whole building has actually fall into the first victim and the victim syndicate, and that they are slowly but surely moving all the chess pieces into place for their next attack on the Bat Family, one that they're sure will be successful this time. So that was Detective Comics, everybody, and overall it was a nice little one-and-done aftermath story coming off the end of Batman of Tomorrow, and also sets up a bunch of new places for this book to go in the future. I'm excited to see the victim syndicate come back, I like the idea that they're choosing to fight the Bat Family smart by discrediting them and using all their stolen information to their benefit. I like the relationship drama between Tim and Steph is really getting played up, and after having him be absent for so many arcs in the row, Tim Drake Robin is really taking center stage here and now. It's just good stuff from start to finish. I would give this one a much deserved 8 out of 10. So that's the book, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, want to check out some of these other videos I've been working on. Then you can follow me on Twitter at Cape Jewel so you always know what new videos are coming next. And hey, with the holiday season coming, if you want to buy this or any other comic I've talked about in trade, please please use my book depository link down in the description. Not only will you get a great deal and not pay anything on shipping, but a percentage of everything bought via my link will go to support me in the channel and it would be much appreciated. So until next time everyone, this has been Cave Joel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again later. Bye-bye.